In this presentation, we will give a broad overview of ICI and its components. We'll talk about what the data is and what it is used for, how the data gets from your district or charter to the state, when the data needs to be submitted, and most importantly, where to find help. Each LEA, or local education agency, submits data to the state by sending in CSV files. These files report the staff and students at the LEA. They define each of the courses, who teaches them, and what students are enrolled in them. Also included is special education information, a definition of the calendars at the LEA, student attendance corresponding to those calendars, the gifted and talented program participation, and any disciplinary actions that resulted in greater than one half day of suspension or expulsion. These CSV files are text files that have the data separated by commas. When you load these files into Excel, for instance, the calendar file, Excel makes it easy to understand by separating the data into columns. However, if we were to load the same file into Notepad, you can see the fields are separated by commas, and each record ends with an end of line. Notice the first line contains the field names. As we walk through the data, you can see each of the fields and the data in the records below that correspond to the position of the heading. Typically, any computer with Excel installed will open CSV files in Excel. This enables you to do a lot of editing functions or data manipulation through the tools in Excel. However, in order to submit these to the state, they cannot be saved as Excel files, but must be CSV text files. These CSV files are uploaded into SRM, or the State Reporting Manager. At roughly 5 p.m. each evening, the submissions loaded in SRM are processed into the State Core database. This is called the ETL process, or Extract, Transform, and Load. Typically, you can see the result of your loaded data in the state reports the next morning, but it may take up to 48 hours to populate or update these reports if there are any errors that halted the ETL process. When your data is loaded into the state core database, it is available for the many state programs that depend on this data. Teacher certification, staff funding, special education, child nutrition, transportation are all examples of programs and funding that depend on this data. In addition, policy decision makers such as the legislature or other entities depend on accurate reporting to guide funding or program decisions to assist educators in providing the best opportunities for Idaho students. From this data, we also deliver aggregated responses to information requests from the media or research programs as well as to federal reporting. The current IC data submission schedule can be found at our website, boardofed.idaho.gov. The schedule includes a couple of submissions that are unique. The program contact submission is an upload of current names, phone numbers, email addresses, etc. of staff at your LEA who should receive communication regarding certain roles. This is how a local education agency can maintain the contact list the state uses to deliver important information. The submission is open and available to be updated at any time of the year since staff changes do happen at any time. Also on a unique schedule is the school finance report that is due once a year. This report reflects the expenditures and revenue from the last year and is due in November. Additionally, the Alternative Summer School IC report is due in September and only applies to LEAs who have an authorized Alternative Summer School for at-risk students. Originally required once a month, the bulk of IC data is submitted through the year on a reduced schedule related to the funding distributions by the state. Each IC data submission is based on the month it is required. The data collected includes from the first day of school through the first Friday of that month. The following two weeks comprise the submission schedule for that data. Note that due to Idaho State Code, the submission in October is required by the 15th, which may make this initial submission shorter than the customary two weeks. The November submission is the most critical to be accurate since the bulk of staff and student funding is based on this data. 
Each submission incorporates data from the first day of school to the last day of the collection period. This follows that the last submission incorporates data from the first day of school to the last day of school. We call this cumulative reporting. This way, corrections or updates can be made in the latest submission and correct any data errors in previous submissions without having to resubmit multiple IC reports to make a fix. IC reporting can be a daunting task. We encourage each LEA to develop a team to focus on the IC report each submission period. Help is available. The Board of Education IC website has a number of resources including manuals, schedules, lists, and templates to assist in the IC submission. Found on this website under the IC data collection files is the Items and Options Sets file. This file contains the definition and description for each of the fields in the IC submission. We cannot overemphasize the importance of this file since it answers about 90% of the questions we receive. There are a number of manuals on the website that are put together by the divisions of the State Department of Education that assist with IC reporting. These include an updated special education guide, assignment credential manual, staff data guidance manual, attendance and enrollment manual, and a special assignment reporting guidance document. Additionally, the CTE, or Career and Technical Education Department, has put together an assignment credential manual specific for those CTE assignments and endorsements. Finally, and most importantly, you have available to you the Regional IC Technology Coordinators. These individuals are available specifically to help you with your state reporting. Each regional coordinator develops a relationship with each LEA in their regions to understand and assist with IC data reporting. If they do not know the answer, they will know who to ask to find the answer. Your regional technology coordinators include Amy Sigler and Roger Evans. Amy covers regions 1 through 3, which includes Boundary County in northern Idaho, all the way down to Bruno Grandview in southwest Idaho. Roger covers regions 4 through 6, which includes Glens Ferry, up to Salmon, down to Preston in southeast Idaho. While each have their own regions, if you are unable to reach your regional coordinator, feel free to reach out to the other to have your questions answered. Roger and Amy communicate regularly to stay consistent and informed on your progress and issues you are facing in IC reporting. This has been an overview of the data collection system for IC, the Idaho System for Educational Excellence. We invite you to reach out to your regional technology coordinator with any questions or concerns or to introduce yourself.